uh, the word on the street tonight is um, is trust. It's uh, trust. That is the word on the street tonight is trust. You know, the word of God says this. It says that thus says the Lord. It says, curse is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength. I'm going to say that again. Curse is the man who trusts in man and make flesh his strength. Then it says, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a shrub in the desert and shall not see any good come. He shall dwell in the parches, places of the wilderness and in uninhabitable salt lands. Then it says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, who trusts is the Lord. Amen. So let the grass wither, the flowers fade, and the word of our God shall stand forever. Uh, what I wanted to say is trust is something that we kind of um, put in a lot of things that we shouldn't. Amen. Uh, the scripture tells us we are to trust God with all our heart. Trust God with all our heart. Uh, because when you really start um, trusting in man, trusting in man, you know, that can lead to danger and it can also lead to disappointment. Uh, because man cannot save you, only Jesus Christ can. Neither can man take care of all your needs, only God can. You know, man will let you down all the time because man won. He is not perfect like God. You know, your very best friend, you know, one of your, you know, everybody has a best friend. Even your best friend can let you down sometimes. You know, your coworker, uh, your fellow students, uh, even your family member can let you down. Uh, it, it, but the Lord will never, never fail us. Remember that the Lord, our God, will never, ever fail us. You know, man falls short daily. Man falls short daily, but God stands tall. Amen. So the Lord is faithful. Uh, he, he, he is always with us. He's, he, he said he was always be with us. He will never forsake us. And he is always doing what he promised to do. Amen. The Lord alone is faithful without fault, but man, men, I'm sorry, will never live up to what the Lord, his ability to save and to keep men in all sorts of situations. That's, that's just how it is, you know, and anytime you call upon the Lord, he is there to help and he is dependable. He is dependable. He's not, you know, man is never dependable. You know, sometimes it's a hit and miss. Uh, some people are pretty good, but man cannot be as dependable as God. You know, it's just not possible, you know. And the Bible tells us to never put your trust in men. Never put your trust in men. Never put your full trust in anyone. Uh, so it's important to understand that we should not put our full trust in anyone, and you, you know, you can trust them sometimes, but never put full trust in any man. The only person that you should put full trust in, amen, uh, is um, Jesus Christ. I see somebody uh, looked up the text and put it in the chat, amen, thank God. But the word on the street tonight is trust. So put that in the back of your mind as we comb through this text. Trust is very important, and hopefully we will discuss it when we uh, have finished interpreting and applying the text. Now, if you look at the text, it says, cursed, cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. Listen to that. Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, 
whose uh, heart turns away from the Lord. Now, the human heart, okay, is guilty of trusting man instead of God, point blank. We are guilty of it all the time. Uh, when we get into a situation, the first person we call is mama, daddy, or brother, or sister, and then we go to God at the end. <laughs> Amen. But <clears throat> we rather trust other people than trust in God. <clears throat> and uh, the people of Judah that trust the arm of the flesh, and that's what it means. Now, the arm of the flesh means this. It means their own wisdom and their own power. That's what it means when it says in the text, you know, their flesh and their own strength. It's important to understand you cannot trust your own flesh or your own wisdom and your own power to deliver you from any enemy, okay? But, you know, they're like many other people who place their trust in man and the power of man and the wisdom. It doesn't make a difference who they are. They can be rich and wealthy people. They can be uh, uh, people who are not as wealthy. They can be trustworthy people in certain instances. But sooner or later, you're going to get disappointed. And the text even you know, says that not only will you be disappointed, but you also will be what? Cursed. That's what the text says. I'm not saying it. It's saying you will be cursed. It said, cursed is the man who trusts in man. That's what the text says. Trust, cursed is the man who trusts in man. So not only will you be disappointed, not only will you be let down, all right, but you, so you, will, always, you, will, you will also be cursed. You know, and, and, it's, and it's, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's really odd that, you know, that we trust and we put trust in foolish places, you know, in anything other than God himself, you know, we'll put trust in a lot of other things other than God. You know, the wisdom of man cannot save. The wisdom of man cannot heal. The wisdom of man cannot do anything. It cannot fight your enemies. It cannot be give you victory in your situation. Only God can. Only God can. The, even the integrity of man cannot save you. Or the might of man, it will not save you. It will not save you from your enemies. Sometimes it won't even save you from yourself. Amen. Because it, the, the, the text clearly tells us that, you know, it's really a curse, you know, who allow the person who allows their hearts to turn away from God. It's a curse. Amen. And that's something that, you know, we see daily. We see every day that people turn away from God and turn to man. Uh, even in this COVID uh, situation that we went through uh, this last year and still going through, men were more dependable or dependent on God, I mean, on man than they were of God. We were looking at the news every day to see what, 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 what uh, um, how did they progress with uh, COVID instead of us praying and turning to God. You know, me and my wife would pray every day when we would leave and thank God in prayer when we come home. Amen. Uh, but people were really glued to the television, glued to the news, trusting in the CDC, and I'm not saying God did not put people down here, you know, like doctors and, 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 and scientists. I understand that. But your total trust should only go to God. It only should go to God. Now, what God does after that, you know, God has his ways. His ways are mysterious. It's not like our ways. But we have to trust in God to do what it is that his will and what he wants for our lives. Stop trusting in man. Stop depending upon man. And you can't trust man from as far as you can see him, for real, honestly, because man is not perfect. 
He is not perfect. He falls, he fails all the time. So it's important to understand that we cannot put our total trust in man. That's not me saying it. That is what the Bible and the word of God is saying. Okay. Now, look at the text. It says, he is like a shrub. Now, they're talking about the, the person that puts his trust in man. He is like a shrub in the desert and shall not see any good come. All right? He is like a shrub in the desert and shall not see any good come. Listen, uh, people who put their trust in man you know, they would be like stunted bushes in the desert. You know, those bushes that don't grow, that just look, what you call it? What we used to call those? Tumbleweeds. You know what I mean? They'd be like tumbleweeds uh, in the desert that has no hope or of recovery when the Lord sends his reign of blessing. That's what the text was basically saying. They will have no hope when, when it's time for the Lord to send or rain his blessings upon uh, those who trusted in him, you know, uh, money, health, government stability, you know, can all be taken away. That's what people don't understand. Uh, it used to be a song that said, you, you can be up today, but you can be down tomorrow. Amen. So it's important to understand you cannot put your trust in anyone but God, because at any given time, what you are putting your trust in, what you are depending upon, what you have hope in can sometimes fail you. Money, health, government stability, huh? All this can be taken away in an instant. You can lose your job tomorrow. You can lose your home tomorrow. You can lose your car, anything. Stuff that, things that you depend upon can be taken away tomorrow, tonight, this weekend, next month. All those things could be taken away. And what, what the text is basically telling us that when you depend on those things, other than pending, depending on God, you are cursed. And you have no hope of recovery when the Lord sends out his reigns of blessing. Amen? So it's important that we know who to trust or who to put our trust in. And I'm going to tell you something else. All those things, people, people depend on their bank account. You know, they feel comfortable because they got a lot of money in the bank. They feel comfortable because they've been on the job 15, 20 years. Amen. They feel comfortable because they live in a good neighborhood. They don't live in the ghetto. They don't live in the bad part of town. But let me tell you, things happen in the good neighborhoods. Trouble comes, trials comes. It doesn't make no difference where you live, what's your social status, amen? Even the best of us goes through trials and tribulations. Even the wealthiest man in the world has trials and tribulations, and he goes through. Don't think he don't, amen? Uh, but if you put your trust in those things, they can fail you. And, and one that can is man. Man, he will fail you every time if you put your trust totally in him. All right? And I'm going to tell you something else. None of those things will satisfy the soul. Uh-uh. None of them. Brand new car, brand new house, brand new job. Brand new man, brand new woman, doesn't make a difference. They will not put that peace and satisfaction in your soul. Hmm? You can, <laughs> it's, just not, it's, it's just not there because the Bible clearly states that you cannot put your trust in that. You cannot put your or depend on uh, that to satisfy your soul. Even if all of these were in abundance, you can have 20 cars. Huh? You can have a house in Florida, in Miami, California, 
New York City, Texas. You can have houses all over the country. You only can live in one at one at a time. Amen. And it will not satisfy your soul. Even if you have abundance of it throughout life. The Bible says, what does it profit a man to gain the world and what? Lose his soul. Nothing is worth losing your soul. Nothing is worth being cursed because you're trusting man instead of trusting God. I'd rather you be mad at me than God be mad at me. Amen. I'm not going to agree. I'm not going to trust you over God. Not going to happen. Not going to do it. And, 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 and I've been in this place, in these places before, where you put your trust in man and it, it, there you go. It happens. Man will fail you. Even some people that have been with you or around you for years, even your closest family members, your closest family members will fail you. Okay? Your children will disappoint you, will fail you. Okay? So it's important to understand who to put your trust in. Look at the text. It says, he shall dwell in the patches. I mean, the parches, I'm sorry. He shall dwell in the parches places of the wilderness in an unhabitable salt land. Now, this is something that's, that's real. The person that trusts in man or give his, or put his total trust in men will live as though in a barren, empty desert made up of salt. A place where, this is where it is, this is what we're talking about, a place where no one could exist, okay? That's what the text is telling us, is that we will live in an unhabitable salt land if you put your trust in man. You will live in an unhabitable salt land. That means you will be in a place that really no one can exist. No one can be blessed. No one can move forward at any time because they're in a place where they are cursed and they're living in an unhabitable salt land. We as Christians and as believers must understand that you can be put in a place because you trust in man. A lot of people are doing 20 and 30 years in jail mm -mm, by putting their trust in somebody. A lot of people have been homeless for years because they put their trust in somebody, in man other than God. Some people have been damaged for years, for years, because they, they put their trust in man. Some people have never recovered, never recovered in life because they continue to put their trust in man instead of putting your trust in God, okay? Now look at the text again, because I'm not going to be long. Look, it says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is in the Lord, I'm sorry. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, who trust is the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. Now, people who place their trust in the Lord will be able to, to withstand all trials and all tribulations. Say it again. People who place their trust in the Lord will be able to withstand all trials, tribulations, hardships, and misfortunes of life because when you put your trust in God, he, he walks with you through your trial. He walks with you through your tribulations, your temptations, your hardships, your misfortunes of life, God is right there with you, all right? He's walking with you through all of that. And sooner or later, when God is walking with you through all of that, sooner or later, you will be victorious. You will have peace, security, and protection all from God, all from God. And I thank God for that. Glory, hallelujah. I thank God for that because, you know, we've been in some places, and I know a lot of y'all have. You've been in some tough areas. 
that everybody was saying, you know what? I, I don't think they're going to make it out of that. You know, I've seen God do some miraculous things. Amen. Uh, I want, I, I, you know, and, and I got to say this, and I'm not calling any names, but I, I, I went to a hospital and seen someone, and I had to, I went in the room and I had to back out because it, it was so horrific looking that I knew this person was not, I just knew in myself that they wasn't going to make it. I could not see past this horrific state that this person was in. You know, I, I prayed, I, I stepped out, I gathered myself, but I could not see it. But I knew and understood this person had God on their side and they was believing in God. Not only was she or they were believing in God, people around them was believing in God for them. You know what I mean? Everybody was praying. People around them was, 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 was in prayer and meditation and, and asking God to bring this person through. But even as a pastor, I looked and said, oh, man, this looks, this looks really bad. And then, you know, uh, I seen God work a miracle. Amen. I seen God take that person from that horrific condition and bring them back to recovery, bring them back to life. When everybody thought it was it was it was over, everybody's like, you know, we all was like, wow, well, I, I don't know. But God, and I thank God, even when man doubts, amen, even when it don't look good, God will allow things to work for the good for those who are called according to and uh, that love him and are called according to his purpose. God will make those those bad situations into good situations, you know, if you trust in him. If you trust in him, not the doctors, not the nurses, not the real estate agent, not the banker, not anybody. If you put your trust totally in God, amen, amen, if you put your trust totally in God, he will, he will bring you to a victorious state. You will be victorious. You will have peace. You will have security and protection in God, you know. People will experience that fullness of life when you trust God and have that assurance of life in eternity with him. That's that, that's that thing that you feel when you trust God. You trust God for down here, and you trust God knowing that when you leave here, when you have sung your last song, prayed your last prayer, read your last verse, God is waiting for you on the other side. Amen. And let me tell you something. When God when you put your trust in God, not only for earthly things, but put your trust in him for eternal things. Let me tell you something. There's a peace in that. There's a, there's a certain peace that, that you can get from nothing else but trusting God. That's it. You know, sometimes we don't see the way out. Sometimes we don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Amen. But there is a light when you trust in God, no matter what the situation it is. Say, you know, Satan always give that appearance that he's winning. <laughs> you know, the crazy part, Satan, God defeated Satan years ago. God defeated Satan years ago. And Satan has no, he has nothing. Amen. Not no power over God. No, no power. Satan has nothing. He just like to make a lot of noise. But when you're trusting in God, when you have that trust in the Lord, amen, and he's walking through you. He's walking, I'm sorry, he's walking with you through the valley of death. You know what I'm saying? You ain't going to feel anything. You won't have any fear. So look, look at the text. It's important to understand that he will protect you. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, who trusts is the Lord. That's a profound statement. Amen. It's a verse. It is a verse that we all use and we've heard many of times, but it's a wonderful thing when you know the promises of God. God made promises throughout his word to protect us, to supply our every need, uh, to be there for us, uh, to, 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 to lead and guide us through every situation. God promises that. Those, those promises are in his word. Amen. Those promises 
uh, in his word. And there's a purpose. You know, the Bible says it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. That's what the word of God says. It is better, the word of God says better, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man, okay? And I'm gonna tell you something else the Bible says. The Bible says that I will say, it would say, uh, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. Y'all remember that text? My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. We have said these Bible verses many and many of times. Now, I'm going to say these texts again so you'll catch it. Uh, the Bible says it is better to trust in the Lord. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Y'all should have your pens and pencils writing this down. And then it also says, I will trust, I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. This is something that we should know as Christians and as believers. This should be almost like second nature to put your trust in God. But sometimes we, as Christians, we, for some reason, we continue to fail to do that. You know, we'll call our girlfriend first and, and discuss our whole issue first before we actually call on God. We'll do that. Y'all get on the phone, you know, talking and talking, trying to figure out how we going, how we going to get that girl on the job. Y'all trying to figure, y'all know how y'all do. Come on now. Uh, we we going to have to cut her off. We're going to have to, you know, we, we have that going on, you know. But if you trust in God, you ain't got to worry about what your enemies are doing. Y'all hear me? You don't have to worry about what your enemies are doing. When you trust in God, God got your back. He hears every conversation. He hears every conversation that's going on. And God going to step in on time. Amen. And the, 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 the psalmist who wrote this text understood who God is to his people. He understood. Yeah, amen. He was able to say with confidence that the Lord was his personal security. We got to say the same thing. God is my personal security. You can't, you can't destroy my marriage if I'm trusting in God. I don't care how good looking you look. Amen. I don't care how good looking, how tall, dark, and handsome. Amen. You cannot destroy my marriage if I'm trusting in God. Amen. Uh, um, you can't do anything to my job. You can't take my job from me. If God, if because because God gives the increase. That's the one thing I want you to understand. Man does not give the increase. God gives the increase. Okay. So you can't take my position. You can't take my promo promotion. Amen. Because God gave it to me, amen? And he's going to protect that for me. You can't take my, anything that I have that God has given, you can't, you can't put your hands on it. You remember that song, I'm going to get back what the devil stole from me? <laughs> I, I hear that all the time. You know, God is not going to allow Satan to do anything. I hear that song, you know, you know sometimes you got to be careful what songs you sing. Satan can't steal nothing that God, doesn't allow for him to take from you. It ain't stealing. God allow him to take it, you know? So you got to be and understand when it comes to the, uh, the, tr the trusting factor of trusting in God. God is, you know, he is our refuge. He is our fortress. Uh, and, and understand something. A refuge is a shelter from danger and from trouble. That's what a refuge means. That's what it is. A fortress is a safe, secure place. You guys been in the military understand what a fortress is. You ever seen a fortress? It's a place that's hard to get into. You know what I mean? It's a place that keeps the enemy out. That's what God is. Amen? That's what God is. You know? And, 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 and when he's a fortress, when you trust in God and he is your fortress, uh, it's almost that it's, you, you are inaccessible to the enemy. Uh, amen. You know, so the psalm says he understood and declared that, you know, he would continually trust in God. He will fully depend on God for protection, for security, and he will faithfully run to him. Now, understand something when threatened by danger or trouble. That's what we fail to do. 
You know, you're trusting in your bank account. You're trusting in the money in your pocket. You're trusting in all those different things instead of trusting in God. Amen? Instead of trusting in God. You know, we got to understand that God is the one that is able to keep us in any situation. He is the one. Stop worrying about all these different things that's going on around you. Stop paying attention to them and focus totally on God. You remember uh, my Sunday school teacher, Sister Pope, she, I think you know, uh, she's still teaching Sunday school, but she's one of the dynamic teachers in uh, uh, Comedy Hills, my home church. And she said, uh, she was teaching us one Sunday and she asked, and she was speaking about when Peter got out the boat. Y'all remember when Peter got out the boat and he was, he, he asked God, could he walk on the way? He asked Christ, could he walk on the water? Now, Peter started to fail. Now, <laughs> he started to fall. He started to sink in the water. And I was like to myself, this is before I understood. I said, now, if, if Christ was all, what happened? Why is he falling in the water? I said, and I raised my hand. I said, Sister Pope, why is he, you know, if, if Christ told him to come out on the water, what happened? You know, and this is what she said. What Peter did was took his focus off Christ. That's why he started to sink. Sometimes we take our focus off of Christ and put our trust in someone else instead of putting it in Christ. That's when we start to sink. That's when we start to fail. That's when we start to not make it because we're focusing on something other than God. Straight up. That's what that's where it happens. We putting our trust in a lot of other things than putting our trust in God. You know, uh, the Bible says, the word of God says that trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord God is an everlasting rock. You remember that text? You know, trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord God is an everlasting rock. You, 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 you ever even seen an everlasting rock? God is that everlasting rock. That means he is that eternal rock. You know, you can only depend on certain things. Some of y'all that had, you remember your first car? I bet you don't have it now. And if you do, you, you're pretty good. You remember uh, 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 your first pair of nice shoes you had? I bet you don't have them now. You remember that first outfit that you bought for yourself with your own money? You remember that? I bet you don't get that outfit now because let me tell you something. The things that if you depend on man, they are temporary. That's why I said that. Those things that you get from man are temporary, but those things and those blessings that you get from God are eternal and are forever. He is a everlasting rock. That means he is an everlasting foundation. It cannot be moved. Amen. And, 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 and I'm going to tell you something else. The Bible says this. It says that in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can man do to me? This is a text I want you to remember. See if somebody, y'all look that up. It says, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What, what can man do to me? That's the question. What can man do to me? I got God on my side. Stop, be, stop being fearful, you know, Stop being fearful with things going on around you because God got your back. Trust in him and you don't have to be afraid because anytime you got a God that's standing with you, amen, anytime you have a God that's standing with you, that has your back, let me tell you something. You shouldn't be afraid of anything. You know, I use the analogy, or I guess not an analogy or an example, one day, uh, I got in a, was getting ready to get into a fight with a guy named uh, Roland Jackson. Roland Jackson. <laughs> we was really friends, but I don't, I don't even know why I got in a fight. So uh, we was about to get into a fight. And uh, I never forget, R Roland was ready to fight, you know. But then all of a sudden, he, fear came on his face. I was like, what's wrong with him? Come on, you want to fight? What's the problem? Why are you, why are you backing out now? Why are you slowing up? 
let's go. You know what I mean? That's what I was saying. Cause I was ready to, I was ready to do it, you know? But fear came on his face. So now I'm, I'm thinking I'm big and bad, right? I'm talking, I'm talking stuff now cause he got fear. He ain't putting his hands up. He act like he don't want to fight. So I'm dancing around, you know, I'm doing all my little showing up cause everybody watching. But what I did not know and what I did not notice is that my big six, four brother was standing behind me and he did not see me. He saw him, right? My big old brother was standing behind me. You know, he was cut up too. And Roland was watching him. He wasn't paying me no attention. So that's how Satan is. Amen. <laughs> Satan ain't watching. He watching God. He like, hold up, man. You know, he fears God. And, and like I'm saying is you don't need to be afraid when God is on your side. You don't need to be afraid. When you got God behind you like that, all your enemies going to melt. Amen. Because they cannot handle God. They, they don't want no parts of God. Amen. So it's important that you do not walk around in fear or being afraid of any circumstances because the God that you serve is all powerful, all knowing and omnipresent. That means he, he, he's, he's everywhere at the same time. Nothing surprises God. Nothing gets past God because God is all powerful, all knowing and omnipresent. So if you're serving a God like that, if you're putting your trust in a God like that, there is really no reason for you to be afraid because man cannot do anything to you. So until next time, that's the word on the street is trust. Trust in God, not in man.